dun, dun, dun. Oh, hey, is it okay if I record? Go for it. I should listen to a thing. This thing is gonna take forever. Oh, god damn it. Mountains once more, and then he was on a road through wild forest, and he glimpsed a chariot being pulled by two. That's Neil Gaiman Stardust, by the way. Goats being driven by a woman in a red dress who looked for the glimpse he got of her, the way Bodicea was drawn in his history books. And another step, and he was in a leafy glen, and he could hear the chuckle of water as it splashed and sang its way into a small brook. He took another step, but he was still in the glen. There were high ferns and elm trees and foxgloves in abundance and the moon had set in the sky. He held up the candle, looking for a fallen star, a rock, perhaps, or a jewel, but he saw nothing. He heard something, though, under the babbling of the brook, a sniffling and a swallowing, the sound of someone trying not to cry. Hello, said Tristram. The sniffling stopped, but Tristram was certain he could see a light beneath a hazel tree, and he walked toward it. Excuse me, he said, hoping to pacify whoever was sitting beneath the hazel tree, and praying that it was not more of the little people who had stolen his hat. I'm looking for a star. In reply, a clod of wet earth flew out from under the tree, hitting Tristan on the side of the face. It stung a little, and fragments of earth fell down his collar and under his clothes. I won't hurt you, he said loudly. This time... As another clod of earth came hurtling toward him, he ducked out of the way, and it okay. smashed into an elm tree behind him. He walked forward. Go away! Pretty said sure a voice, it's a fish, a which means this is fish number two. As if it had just been crying. Just go away and leave me alone. She was sprawled awkwardly beneath the hazel tree, and she gazed up at Tristan with a scowl of complete unfriendliness. She hefted another clod of mud at him, menacingly. But did not throw it. Her eyes were red and raw. Her hair was so fair it was almost white. Her dress was of blue silk, which shimmered in the candlelight. She glittered as she sat there. Please don't throw any more mud at me, pleaded Tristram. Look, I didn't mean to disturb you. It's just there's a star fallen somewhere around here, and I have to get it back before the candle burns out. I broke my leg, said the young lady. I'm Sorry, of course, said Tristram, but the star, I broke my leg.